Okay, you can start. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mess Leads for Great Tales. This is Tapua. I'm going to wrap you up with a couple of questions. Okay, so um, we have looked so far at uh, this is what we have been looking at so far. So we have actually looked at uh, uh, estimating and measuring length. We have looked at uh, estimating and measuring distance. We have looked at measuring mass and weight. Last week we were doing with uh, measuring volume. So this week, uh, today's lesson is about measuring and monitoring temperature. So this uh, today's lesson completes the topic of measurement. But before we look at that, before we look at that, I want to look at uh, a question on measuring volume, since that is what we do doing. So I want to do a recap on that. Okay, so actually I have a question for you guys. Uh, this is the question I have for you. Okay. So the question is about measuring volume, since that is what we are doing, looking at. Okay, so we are going to look at a question that deals with measuring volume and calculating cost. So this is important that, uh, for example, you want to bake a cake, you need to know the cost of the requirements, the amount of requirements that you are going to. So this is actually very important for us to look at. Okay, so I have a question here, it says, uh, we have been looking at volume guys. So if we have been if you're not been paying attention to the lesson that we have been doing, this is the last time we will be looking at this. Okay, so I just want to look at this question, then we jump on to measuring temperature and the last uh, chapter of our topic on measurement of our physical quantity. Okay. So I have a question here. The question is saying. Tandy is baking cupcakes, and the recipe she requires one and a third cups of milk. A. Calculate how many milliliters of milk she will need if one cup is equal to 200. Okay, so I have here, so the first thing, guys, is to have our requirements, what we need, what do we have. What do we have? Okay, so we are told that our uh, one cup is equal to 250 milliliters. One cup is equal to 250 milliliters. We need to figure out how many milliliters can we... Uh, okay, I will try to speak a little bit slower. Okay. So I have here the information we are provided with. The information we are provided with is one cup is equal to 250 milliliters. So we need to figure out how many milliliters are there in one and a third of a cup. That is why we need to figure out that. Okay, let's see how we can Let's see how we can do this. Okay, so guys, just try to follow what I'm doing here. Just try to follow what I'm doing here. And do, just try to follow what I'm doing here if my volume is not up to par. Okay, so I have the one and the third cup. That is the question. Again, guys, I'm sure I now sound like a broken record. Asking you guys is this more or is this less? So as you can see, this is more. Okay, but to make our calculations a little bit easier, we need to convert this into an improper fraction. We need to convert this into an improper fraction. So when we convert this to an improper fraction, what we are saying is we say three times one, we get three plus this one. So we're saying three times one plus one, which is four over three. 
So one and the same is the same as saying four over three. So we need to figure out what is the number of millimeters representing four over three. Okay, so we already have said this is going to give us more, right? So if it is going to give us more, the rule says a bigger number over a smaller number. So this is our bigger number in comparison to this number we have here. Everyone can see. Okay, let me try to let me try to use a, a different marker. Let me try to use a black one. Okay. So we have four over three here. So we are saying more. So if it is more, we say four over three divided by one. Don't forget this is cup and this is cup. Multiply by. 250 milliliters. Okay, so when we say cup and cup, these two will cancel out, so we no longer have cup there. So we are now left with one into that two to remain four over three. So we are now left with four divided by three, multiplied by 250. And again, this is in milliliters, so our answer has to be in milliliters. Right? Okay, what do I have here? I have three, 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 and a page milliliter. If I want it to be exact, uh, I'm sorry, Karen, but I will try to make sure maybe it's an internet problem, but I can't help. I can't help that. Okay, so we are saying three, 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 and the page. Or you can write it as three, three, three point three, three. Depending on on the question requirements. Depending on the question requirements. Yeah, maybe it is my bandwidth. But you just have to follow what I'm doing here, guys. So if the video is not really good, we are actually creating another one for you so that you can download uh, over the YouTube channel or over Facebook or something. Okay, just, just try to follow what I will be writing here. Okay, so we have 333.33 millimeters. That is what we have. So you can either be asked to give it as an exact, so this is the exact answer here. This is the exact answer. And if the question is specifying B to uh, two significant figures, you just write it B uh, to two decimal places. So this answer is to two decimal places. So if they are, they are asking you to convert your answer to three decimal places, you write it like this. You just count the, the F3 here. Because as you can see, this is a recurring number here. This is a recurring number. We are saying this is equal to 3.3333 and so on. So the answer does not complete there. So I've written this as um, an approximation to two, to two decimal places. If they are asking you to give the answer to two decimal places, you write it as in this one. Okay, let's move on to another question, guys on this question. So we are asked to calculate how many millimeters of milk she will need if one cup is equal to 250 millimeters. So that is why we figure out to be 333 millimeters or 333 and a third of a millimeter. I'm not sure how you're going to figure out what is a third of a millimeter, but it does be saying approximately 333. Okay, let's move on to part B, guys. Part B is saying, if the recipe is designed to produce 20 cupcakes, if the recipe is designed to produce 20 cupcakes, calculate the amount of milk required to bake 30 cupcakes. Give your answer in liters. Okay. 
if the recipe is designed to produce 3D cupcakes. Okay? Calculate the amount of milk required to bake 30 cupcakes. Okay. So the recipe is saying um, we need uh, we need to produce if the research designed to produce 30 cupcakes. Calculate the amount of milk required to bake 30 cupcakes. Okay, so we are saying this amount we have got here, this amount we have got here is designed to make uh, 30 cupcakes. Okay, let me just, I'm going to use the exact value for this calculation. Uh, another thing you have to know, guys. If you are calculating and you find like this question, part A is giving us an answer that we will use in part B. It is best for you to keep uh, the actual answer, to calculate using the actual answer. Because if you calculate using the rounded off figure we have here, that is saying 333.33 millimeters, if you use this value, in your proceeding calculations, in the calculation that you will follow, there will be errors in the final answer that you get for part B. So you actually need to use the exact value we got here. That is saying 333 and the 30 of a millimeter. So this is the value you are supposed to use. Whenever you are given a question that, um, that you will use another answer that you have already have. So it's best to use the exact answer. So, if you are not able to have the exact answer, it's best guys to so to store that value in your calculator. Okay, it's best that you store that value in your calculator. Like we had here, when I did my calculations, when I said four over three multiplied by two fifty, the answer that I I got that says thirty three three hundred thirty three point three 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 three. That answer I'm supposed to store it in my calculator. Right, guys. I'm supposed to store it in my calculator. Then I, I can use it better. I hope you're able to use your calculator to store your value. values. I'm just going to show you here how to store your values in case you're not familiar with the method. Okay, so I have my answer here. I said four divided by three, multiplied by two hundred. Okay, so I just say uh, two that value in m. So I just Place that value in there. So in case I want to use that same value, I will just say recall. Sorry for that, guys. Okay. I will say recall the value, then I will get my value for my for my calculator there. Okay. So I just have to say alpha m. Then this will retain my actual value. Then I will have to use this value in my calculation that proceed. Okay. Unfortunately for this question, I already have um, the exact value. So that is what I'm going to use. Okay. Okay. Since there was a hand up, not anymore. Okay, so let's proceed guys. Okay, so what are we saying? We are saying we have um, 300 and the height of millimeters. Okay, so we are showing that uh, this, recipe, this, this recipe is making 20 cupcakes. Okay, so I write 20 cakes here. The question is asking us, what will I need to use when I have, when I need to make 30 cupcakes? What amount of milk will I have to use? So I see I have, write, I have written cakes this side. So this side is where I'm going to write cakes again. So I have 30 cakes. Okay. Then I ask myself, am I going to use more milk or less milk when I'm making 30 cupcakes? 
obviously the answer is more, right? So I'm going to use more milk in comparison to making 20 cupcakes, right? So again, if it is more, we will say a bigger number over the smaller number. So I'm saying 20 cups over 20 cups. Multiply by quantity. Quantity is this one. This guy is the quantity. So I have 33 and a phase of millimeters. Caps and caps. Zero and zero. Okay, I see there is a hand up. I can't see who raised their hand. Okay, so I just have to continue. So I now have um, 3 over 2 multiplied by 333. So that is what I have. So I have 3 divided by 2 multiplied by. Okay. This is equal to. Four nine nine point nine nine. It continues like this, and it is in millimeters. So just to round this off, just to round this off, this will give us five hundred millimeters. This will give us five hundred millimeters so this is the amount of milk that is required yes Vicky, that's the correct answer then that's the correct answer then 449.9 so that is the amount of milk that is required to make this cup okay okay guys let's move on to patient that follows Question C says, question C says, milk is sold No, we don't have to run off all the time. But for example, you're being asked to calculate a uh, equation that is requiring you to calculate number of cupcakes, right? You're being asked to calculate the number of cupcakes. Or the number, okay. Uh, a practical example, you are being asked to calculate the number of people. Okay. And during your calculations, you find out that there is actually, you get something like 5.7 people. You cannot write 5.7 people. You just write it, uh, six people to round that figure out. You just have to round up the figure so that you get to the, uh, an answer that is actually meaningful, an answer that is more meaningful. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on to part C, guys. So part C says, milk is sold in bottles of one liter each for 850 8, in the local store. Calculate the amount of money and you will need to spend on milk to make the 30 cupcakes. Okay? You need to calculate the amount of money that Tandy has to. Okay, so we are told milk is sold in bottles of one liter each for $8.50 at the local store. Calculate the amount of money and you will need to spend on milk to make 30 cupcakes. Okay, so from our previous calculation, we found that uh, she had to use what? Okay, Sandy, uh, I'm sure Christine will do that for you. Okay, thank you, Kundurai. Okay, so milk is sold in bottles of one liter. 
So since milk is sold in bottles of one liter, guys, since the milk is sold in bottles of one liter, and we have, so we have calculated and we saw that only 500 liters, only 500 milliliters is required. So she only needs to buy one, one liter bottle. She only needs to buy one liter bottle, which will cost her uh, eight round fifty. Which will cost her eight round fifty because she only needs to make a, a thirty cup. Okay, let's move on to question number two. So question number two is asking us: Kabiso decides to sell homemade lemon. He has made five liters of lemonade to sell at the local school's rugby tournament. Okay. The Biso decides to sell homemade lemonade. He has made five liters of lemonade to sell at the local school. So as soon as I have my information, I usually want to write it down in case I never know when I'm going to use it. So I already have uh, five liters, so I know Tabiso is he has five liters of lemon. Okay. Kapito will be selling his lemonade in 250 milliliter plastic cups. Okay. Calculate the number of cups of lemonade you will be able to sell. Okay. Calculate the number of cups you will be able to sell. I have, I have one cup. E equal to 250. The question is, how many cups do I need to make? Okay, so this I have to convey to milliliter. Okay, so I know that we talked about these guys. Uh, 1,000 liters, 1,000 milliliters is equal to 1 liter. Okay, so we have that information. So we're now saying 5,000 milliliters. Then you ask yourself, is it going to be more or is it going to be less? Obviously, it is going to be more. So if it is more, what do I do? I have a bigger number of a smaller number. So I'm going to say 500, 5,000, 5,000 milliliters over 250 milliliters, multiply by quantity. My quantity here is one cup, so we have one cup here. Okay, milliliters and milliliters. So my answer is not going to contain milliliters. Okay, so I have cancelled out milliliters. I cancel out these zero, these zero goals. Okay, 25 into 25, I have one. 25 into 50, I have two. Then I have a zero here. So my answer is going to be 20 multiplied by one cup, which is 20 cups. Okay, so I have 20 cups. So, from what we are understanding there, we are saying that Tabiso has to sell 20 cups of lemon. She has to eat 20 cups. Okay. So, uh, oh, these are the cups that Tabiso has to sell. Okay. Part B says, Okay, so part B says, if he sells the lemonade at five rounds per cup, how much money will we make from the lemonade? Assume that he sold all his lemonade. Okay, so this guy is really into for some. Okay, so you can just say uh, one cup is going for how much? One cup is going for five rounds, right? And the 20 cups will be going for what? So this is how you think mathematical size. I'm, I'm sure you are able to just say 20 times 5. But I, I want you to understand how we get to say 20 times 5. The reasoning behind that. We need to think mathematical for us to solve a lot of mathematical problems. We just need to think mathematical. Right? Okay, so we have 20 cups. Do you think 20 cups are going to cost more than one cup? Of course, we use the same one, right? 
Okay, so that's why I have more than Okay, so if it is more, the rule says a bigger number over a smaller number multiplied by the quantity. The quantity is times five times. Okay, cup and cup is a P. The lift is 20 times five. Okay, 20 times five to get on. So he is on the five. Okay, since I have a hand up, hello, Casey. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, Casey. Okay, Casey seems to be shy, she doesn't want to talk. Okay, so this is the amount of money that Tabitha is going to get if he or she managed to sell all his lemonade cups. Okay, let's see where that is. Okay, let's move on to part C. If it costs Tabitha, if it costs Tabitha 120 to make the lemonade, how many cups would he need to sell? at each five runs before he's made back the money he spent. Okay. Okay, he says if it costs a piece of 120 to make the lemonade, how many cups would he need to sell at each five run before he made back the money he spent? Okay, guys, this is how we do it. Okay, so what do we say? We are saying uh, one cup is equal to how many ones? Is equal to five runs. Okay, how much do we need to make? We need to make 120 runs. We need to make 120 runs. This is the patient. We need to make 120 runs. Okay, so we are saying one cup is equal to five francs, right? We need to ask ourselves how many cups are going to make us 120 runs. So this is obviously going to be more. We are, not, we are going to make we are going to need more cups for us to reach 120 runs. Okay, so if it is more, the rule says a bigger number in runs over. A smaller number again which is in run multiply by run and run cancel out five into five one five into this guy two into twenty you have four so you will need to make twenty four okay yes guys I'm sure you got that right one is that um you got it twenty four cups that's how much he needs to make for him to get back to um, 10 four cups. Okay, and since I have someone in their hand up. Okay, so we have 10 four cups. Guys. That's how much he needs to make. So if Chabiso needs to make profit, he needs to make at least more than 10 four cups. So you see, this is really important, guys. If you want to do your small business, your lemonade shop, you want to set up your lemonade shop, you need to be able to make these calculations. You make these calculations, you're able to, to, to figure out if this is really a lucrative business for you to venture in. Because you don't want to make a loss. You know, the whole reason of, of being in a business is for you to make profits. So you, you need to figure out before you set up your shop how many uh, lemonade am I able to sell stuff like that. Okay, guys, uh, let's jump into today's work. So today's work is about measuring monitoring temperature. So we are going to do uh, some questions involving temperature. I'm sure you are familiar with um, the instrument used for measuring temperature. This is a uh, a clinical uh, a laboratory thermometer that measures temperature from uh, negative 10 degrees up to 100, 
other than 10 degrees. Okay. Uh, we have also seen all these uh, instruments used to measure temperature. This one is an outdoor thermometer that will measures the outdoor temperature. And we have seen these in stocks if you still have these that uh, for ovens and stuff like that. Okay, and you have also seen this over uh, the weather stations telling us uh, the, how hot it is, how cold it is. So these are the calculations we are going to do. Okay, so I have uh, an example here for you. So it says, Natalia feels like she is getting sick and decides to measure your body temperature using a thermometer. Once a day for a week to see if she's developing a fever. She knows that if the temperature rises above 37.5 degrees, which is the normal body temperature, right? She needs to see a doctor because this means she, is, she has an infection. Natalia records the following values. Natalia records the following values. Oh, sorry, Andre. What are we going to do is, I want to look at the questions. I'm sure it will benefit more, even if you don't hear my voice and speak. But I just want to jump into questions so that you can follow what I'll be doing. Okay, guys. Okay. So I have a question here. Okay, so I have the data here. So the data has day and temperature. So Natalia has been measuring herself from Monday to Sunday. So this is the information she has. Okay, so I have the first question here. What is the, temp the lowest temperature she records? So it's just a matter of observation, guys. The lowest temperature she can, she observed. Okay, so I have 36 here, I have, uh, okay, so the, Lowest temperature was recorded on Monday, which is 36.0 degrees Celsius. As you know, guys, temperature is measured in Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin. So we usually use uh, uh, two degrees Celsius, but uh, the SI units for years, that's it, uh, 36 degrees. Okay? Part B, what is the highest temperature she records? What is the highest temperature she records? What do you think, guys? The highest temperature she records? Yes, that's it, guys. 37.4. That's the highest temperature she recorded. Okay. Part C says, what is the difference between these two temperatures? The difference between these two temperatures. First, we got this 36.0, and then you told me that uh, the highest temperature recorded was 37.6. So what is the difference between these two temperatures? The difference between these two temperatures. Okay, Vicky. So guys, when we're talking about um, the difference, whenever you in mathematics and we are talking about difference. When we say difference, we mean the, the value that is separating the two values. Like in this example, right, we have, um, we have on Monday, we have a 36.0 degrees Celsius. Then on, uh, is it on Wednesday? Or uh, Thursday, we have 37.6 degrees. So when a question asks you the difference in meds, they are asking you to subtract the two values, right? They are asking you to subtract the two values. They are asking you to subtract the two values, right? So it's not like in the literal sense. Yes, it's not like in the literal sense, guys. When they ask you the difference between uh, two values, they want you to find uh, how big is the other room. Oh, very sorry, guys. I, I, I can help you with that. Okay, so when they ask you to find the difference, 
between two values. They are asking you to find the they are asking you to find these values here. When you say 37.6 degrees, subject 36.0 degrees. That is what they are asking you to find when they ask for the difference. So the difference here is like what uh, Vicky got saying is 1.6. Yes, it's 1.6 degrees. That is the difference. Okay. Okay, let's move on to part C. Part C says, what is the difference between these two temperatures? Okay, we got that. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Do you think Natalia should have seen a doctor? Give reasons for your answer. What do you think, guys? Do you think Natalia should have seen a doctor? Why do you say yes or no, guys? Is it either yes or it's no, not yes and no? Vicky? Yes. Ah, no, guys, it's not even close to Corona. Come on. <laughs> okay, so, Adele does not have a fever. He doesn't, because we are told here the normal body temperature is 37.5 37.5 that is the highest you can get to being hot okay yeah maybe temperature is going down maybe it just depends on the time of the day it took the, the temperature no this difference was between the two the highest and the lowest no the difference between um, uh, the normal body temperature and his, his weight. Okay. Okay, I, I, I hope you go that, guys. We're just looking for, um, for the difference between these values, the 37.5. As you can see, guys, it is very close to 37.5. Actually, the normal body temperature of a human being, we're just supposed to say 37 degrees, not really 37.5. It's a little bit more accurate, but we just need 37. 37 is enough for us. Yeah, it's a crazy. Okay, let's look at part, part B of the question. On what day was she the most ill? What do you think? On what day was she the most ill? What do you think, guys? On what day was she the most ill? Yes, on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday. As you can see, this is really above 87.5. This is really above 87.5. Yes, guys, on Thursday. It was supposed to, it, it was going on and on and on. You want 87.5. Then you say, uh, there's a chance that uh, he or she might be having corona. <laughs> Okay, but uh, she's just having a fever, right? Nothing about corona, you don't need to scare her. Okay, let's look at uh, this part, guys. Oh, do you think she was getting better by the end of the week? Explain. Do you think she was getting better by the end of the week? Do you think it was, she was getting better by the end of the week? Yes, I think so too. I think so too, guys, because as you can see, from 37.6 to 37 here, at the end of the week, she was getting better because the temperature was falling. Yes, she was getting better. As you can see, from 37, yes, the fever was dropping. She was, the temperature was dropping, guys. That's great. I'm really proud for you. I'm really proud of you. Okay. Okay. Um, Third question says, draw a line graph floating the information in the table. Okay, so we actually discussed about drawing graphs of, of this type, guys. Let me just show you how you can do it. But when you are using um, 
a graph paper you are supposed to be more accurate than what I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing now. Okay, so I'm just going to illustrate a point that I want to make here. Okay. Okay, you can see me. Okay, so here I have um here I have Monday. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just to I just want to illustrate a point here. So as you can see, guys, okay, let me show you what I want to show you. As you can see, guys, this temperature range is not spanning from zero to de zero degrees up to uh, hundreds, as you would expect, or it's not starting from zero. That is the point uh, I just need to make here. As you can see, guys, these values are not starting from zero. They are actually the smallest value we have is 36 and the biggest value we have is 37.6 so it's just a difference of 1.6 as you have seen there okay so for us to start from zero here of course we have a zero we can put a zero here for us to start floating from these values and say uh this is a uh, zero point, it will not be fair to the graph in the case that we we'll actually write numbers from 0 to 36, right? In that space, we're not going to use it in our graph. So there's no need for us to start from 0 to, to 36 and include those 36 values. There's no need for us to do that, right? So we actually need just to start from, we can just start from, uh, let's see, we have 36 here. Okay. In this 36, and each equal interval is going to represent um, uh, 0 0.1 degrees. Okay, this division, this small division here, so this is uh, representing 0 0.1. So we have 1, 2, so I need to write 16. So you need to equally divide 16 demarcations here. So that I can write a big as possible a graph, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, eighteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So between these two values, here I can have um, the last value that I have, which was uh, eight seven points, eight seven points. This is the value I have, 876. Okay, so the point that I, I wanted to illustrate is this, of um, breaking the scale, so that you can write as big as possible a graph. Okay, I hope you understood that. So you just need to break the scale here, so that this, is including all the 36 values from 0 to 36 that we are not going to include in our plot. But you, we need to make them make it clear that there are some values that are here. So we are just pissing the y axis so that it fits, it fits our, our requirements. Okay, so if you have that, then you, it is now easier for you to plot. Because this is representing text six and this is representing text six point one. Up to ten, we have text seven. Then we count six, that will represent uh text six points. Text seven point six. Okay. Okay, let's uh, move on to a more challenging session I I instilled for you. So this is the graph uh, the prepared. So this is what this is what I was talking about. So from zero to year, they didn't include it, then they just put it at this value set. Okay. 
Okay, so let's move on to these parts. These parts here. So this is the last thing we are going to discuss today, guys. This is the last thing we are going to discuss today. Okay, so okay, thank you. Okay, Kerry is going to back fish. Okay, is the up? I is only five minutes left. Eh? Okay, Kerry is going to back fish. Have you heard already? Are you, are you have done with me? Are you done with me already? Kerry is going to back fish and potatoes for dinner. Open the box of frozen fish, the instructions say. Cook for 20 minutes at 200 degrees. A recipe for baked potatoes needs to be over temperatures of 120. What is the temperature difference between these two temperatures? Okay. So now you are now familiar with the uh, difference, guys. I'm sure you can calculate the difference. What is the difference? What is the difference between these two temperatures? We now know what a difference is. I'm glad you are having fun, guys. Okay, so what is the difference between uh, these two values we have here? Yes. Uh, the other one is saying 200 degrees, the other one is saying 120 degrees. So what is the difference between these two values? Yes. Yes, guys, it's 80 degrees. When we are just calculating the difference, we need to calculate uh, 200 degrees minus 120 degrees. That's what they are asking us, the difference. Okay, so that is what we do. Okay, let's move on to part, question number two. Question number two says, baby lives in Durban. He knows that at sea level, water boils at 100 degrees. He is trying to boil water in a kettle on the stove. If the water is 72 degrees, how much water does it need to be in degrees before it will start boiling? What do you think, guys? How much water does it need to be in degrees before it starts boiling? How much water? Yes, 28 degrees, guys. 28 degrees. 28 degrees. That is very tough, day, guys. Rest up. I'm glad you are understanding this. Okay. Great stuff, guys. Thank you. Great stuff. Okay, let's move on to question number three. So we just want to finish this. Uh, we do question number three and question number three. Okay. Mary wants to make ice cubes. She knows that water freezes at, freezes at zero degrees. She measures the temperature of the water in the ice tray. To be 23 degrees. How much colder does the water have to be before it freezes? How much colder? Yes, the questions are easy. Yes, most of the questions in the exam are easy, guys. You just need to relax when you are taking your exam. These questions are easy. Okay, so we need to find the difference. Yes, the difference is 23 degrees. It needs to be 23 degrees colder. 23 degrees colder. Okay? Let's look at uh, question number four. Tembila lives in Switzerland, the coldest town in South Africa. Okay? And record the following minimum temperature in degrees Celsius during winter. Okay? Question A says, Arrange these temperatures from the coldest to the warmest. Arrange these temperatures from the coldest to the warmest. Can you do that, guys? Arranging these temperatures from the coldest to the warmest. What do you think is the coldest temperature I have been? Okay, let me see the answers I have. 
Okay, yes, the coordinate is negative 25. The coordinate is negative 25. The coordinate okay, is... Okay, we've got five more minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the coordinate is negative 25. What do you think is the highest temperature there? The highest temperature there. Oh, come on, Zia, but you really quick to get rid of me that quickly. We have a few minutes left. Okay. So we have uh, the highest temperature we have there is 8 degrees. So you just have to arrange them uh, in ascending order, guys. I'm sure you can do that. Okay, let's look at uh, question B. Question B says, what is the difference between the coldest and the warmest temperature he recorded? Yes, I'm sure this is going to be tricky for them. What is going to be the difference between the coldest and the warmest temperature he recorded? We have seen that the coldest was negative 5. We have seen that the coldest was negative 5. And the hottest was seven degrees. So what do you think is the difference? Okay, let me see here. Yes, guys, you really you guys are really clever. Okay, so the difference here is actually uh, 13 degrees. There is a 13 degrees difference between these two values. We take into the account we just we want the difference between these positions. If you are having trouble with these guys, uh, have your number line. Have your number line. Oh no, it's just 18 guys. Not negative. There is no negative. We just need the difference. If you are having problem in trying to understand what we are saying, have your number line guys. Have your number line. Number line goes like this one. So we have a uh, a negative five here, right? Then you have a seven here. Just calculate uh, how many numbers we can find between these two. That will give you the difference. That is the difference. That is what they are asking you. To just calculate the difference between these two numbers. This is negative five to seven. You just calculate how many values are found in between that will give you. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the lesson as much as I did. I will see you again uh, tomorrow. Okay, I will see if I can follow your TikTok with you, Wayne. Okay, guys, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.